Well, it's getting colder outside, it's getting darker earlier. That can only mean one thing, it's layout building time. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 5 of my series on building a new model railroad. My name is Peter Borges and I'm the builder and owner of BNSF Chicago Sub in N-Scale. So welcome back. Those of you who've been here before, great to see you again. And those new visitors, welcome. To follow on with the progress of my building of the new model railroad, be sure to subscribe down below and click on that little bell icon to be notified of any future updates. So in this episode, we're going to start with the track planning. So finally getting some stuff done. What I'm going to show you in this episode is how I'm going to start the track planning. And what I've decided to do is base it all around a helix. So one side of the layout is going to have the helix on it. That's going to connect the lower staging levels to the main deck of the layout. And on the lower staging will be the metro yard and a small staging yard for the freight. And the helix will be joining the two levels together. Now for this helix I've chosen a company in Germany who does these great helix kits so you can choose how many levels you want, the size of the helix, all different things, all made from plywood, um, high quality. So I'm hoping that'll arrive in the next few days. Um, in the meantime, what I've done is I've ordered a whole lot of um, track. I've decided to use Kato Uni track for the helix, just to make it simpler to do and make it more robust as well. It's just easier to use um, fixed curves rather than flex track. Nothing's going to go anywhere. I'm going to show you which track I've chosen for that. So that's coming up just now. Um, and also what I'm going to do is just explain the process of planning. Um, some people like using paper, some people use, like using software. Um, I like using a combination of those and also have it in front of me. Um, so what I actually like doing is I like taking the, the track, putting it down in front of me and working it out that way. And then I eventually transfer it to paper or to the track planning software. Um, I just find it easier that way and I can, it, it helps me visualize it better. So I'll show you how I do that, um, especially with this particular track. Um, how I'm going to also, I use this to determine what size helix I needed as well. Uh, determine the radius that I needed. Um, and so I could just make, you know, order the correct kit. So let's get started with that. I'll first show you the, the track. Um, and then I'll show you the process of the initial planning on how to decide on what size helix I needed. So let's get started on that. So as I told you earlier, I've chosen the Kato Unitrack for my Helix. And the main reason for that is just the ease of installation. It's a lot quicker to install it. And also it's more reliable. And that's the one thing you want in a Helix. You want a reliable track. So I'm just going to show you which one I've chosen. And you can see here, I've chosen the super elevated double track. So because I'm having um, one track for the Metro and one track for the freight, I thought better to have the double track. It's less bottlenecks in the Helix. And the radius, this is the largest radius they do. It's 414 millimeters or 19 inches as the outer radius and 381 millimeters or 15 inches on the inner radius. So 414 millimeters or 19 inches should be more than good enough for the modern rolling stock I've got. So let me just show you a closer view of this. As you know, Keto Union track is expensive. It's not the cheapest track in the world. Um, but they come with two in a pack. And let me show you there. There you can see the super elevation. And it's pretty good distance between the tracks as well. So there won't be any chance of cars hitting each other if they're coming around the track at the same time. And obviously with super elevation, you want to be able to have an easement track to go down to flat level track. And of course they've thought of that as well. And there is your easement tracks, the same radius. And this is the easement track that goes down from the super elevation to the flat. And again, they've got two in a pack. This time it's just short sections. So as you can see here, this is super elevated. And this side is flat. So this, this will attach to the super elevated track. And then that will be attached to the flat level track on the other side. So I'll have one of these, one set of these at the entry and one of the actual points of the helix. And then they will be, they'll be attached to this set of flat tracks. Again, it's two in a pack, so that's all I need for entry and exit point. And then this will then attach to whatever track I then choose to do for the rest of my layout. So it'll either be Pico code 55 or Micro Engineering code 55 once I've decided which one I'll do. And I'll just do a transition 
it'll join this Kato Uni track to the other track. Then of course the important thing is to make sure you have electrical continuity all the way through. And what they've got over here is a feeder track. So this attaches to the track, I'll put it where it comes from the easement track to the level track. And there'll be one of these per main track and there'll be four in total, so two at the bottom on the exit point and one at the entry point. And they've got wires attached to them and this will be attached to my track bar. So it'll make sure I've got proper electrical continuity all the way through the helix. Once I had the track in place on the ground, I then tested it with the longest cars I've got and a couple of locomotives, just to make sure that the cars and locomotives would go around the track without any issues. And luckily that was success, so I was ready to order the Helix kit. I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to the track planning software I'm using. Now this is Extract CAD, uh, which is a free software and it works on uh, Macs and PCs and um, or Macs and Windows and also on um, Linux devices as well. So pretty much any anything, which is what I like about it. And of course it's free. Um, so just to show you what I've started with, um, you can see down here is my original, one of my original yards. Um, and I'm still going to use the yard I've got. I haven't destroyed that. That's the one bit of the last layout I have still got. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to use this as my metro yard. So I'm going to shorten the tracks and I'm going to use that to store my metro locomotives and coaches it for the uh, lower staging. Uh, now, just to show you, I've added the Cato Uni track pieces here. Um, just this isn't the proper helix in the software, but just to get a representation so I can work out sizes. Now you can see here is, um, if I just hover over it, it should show me the track piece. Uh, no, it's not going to. Okay, there we go, right at the bottom. Okay, so you've got, it's a Kato Uni track, the 2181, which is the double track elevated curve, super elevated curve. So I've added all the pieces there. You can see each individual one there. And it just gives me an idea of what size I've got to work with. And to show you um, what I'm talking about is if I, show you here this is part of where my original layout was so this piece here is where my one of my yards was um, and my locomotive terminal I can see this um, where the helix is going to be is a little bit wider than the original bench work um, that bench work is actually still there um, but I'm going to just adjust it so I can I can add in a wider piece for the helix um, so it just gives you an example of what you know how much bigger this helix is than my original layout um, so my, um, my next step, once I've got the Helix kit built, um, then I can work further with this. Then I'll know exactly where my entry and exit points are going to be on this baseboard. Um, and then I can start working out how I'm going to connect this track into the Helix. Um, and if I'm going to put anything else underneath it, I might have another bit of, little bit of yard or something underneath here. Um, and obviously I'm going to have the freight yard as well, so that's going to be added in. Um, and so that'll come up in a later episode. I'll show you all of that. So this just gives you a brief overview of what, what I'm working with. Um, so this is my whole garage. It's a single car garage. Um, this bit over here is um, a workshop. So I've got the main entry to the gar garage over here. And this is my workshop. I've got my, my modeling bench over here with all my tools. And then this is the, it'll be the main layout room and then obviously the double garage doors over on this side here. Um, so that just shows you what I'm, the space I'm working with. 
Um, I'll give you full full details further on in a later episode, but um, just to give, show you now, based based on the helix, where it's going to fit in with the the lower level helix, um, and just to how I'm starting the planning based on that. All right, so um, yeah, I'll follow on in the future episode and give you more in depth about what I'm doing with this software. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it gave you a better idea of how I'm going to do the planning. So the next stage is um, just waiting for the Helix to arrive. I'll show you that. I'll do a, an unboxing and just show you what's what's in the package, show you what the Helix insists of. Um, and then I will uh, do a video on building that Helix. Um, once I've done that, it'll have me in place. I'll show you where it's going to go. And then we can carry on with the track planning from there. I can then have a fixed position. So the Helix will be here. I know exactly where the entry and exit points are going to be. And then I can work out um, where my staging yards are going to go and then where the first level of the layout is going to go. So it all hinges on that particular helix. So be sure to check back soon. Um, these are going to come more frequent now because it is getting darker, it's getting colder, there's less, less stuff to do in the garden and during the winter. So over the next few months there'll be more episodes coming up uh, more frequently. I'll try to see if I can do some kind of schedule. I'm, I know I'm not good with that, but I'll try to see what I could do. Um, so in the meantime, if you like what you've seen and you want to make sure you don't miss any future episodes, be sure to click on that subscribe button and click on the little bell icon to be notified of all my updates. So I'll be back very soon. In the meantime, enjoy your model railroading and see you soon.